So difficult bosses. The first thing you have to do if you have a difficult boss is to assess the individual. And it's a good idea to go back to the leadership stuff that I talked about and look at those things that I put under there as challenges. Okay? And please do not be slavish about those terms. There are other terms that are you, you may find in leadership books or you yourself may think of that work better than what's there. I just chose the ones that I think are the um, capture the greatest extremes and also are to me the most sensible among all the literature that I've read, okay? So uh, that's why they're there. But if you look at the challenges, what you're going to see is the downside of that style of leadership. So look at the person from the perspective of how they're trying to lead and then look at the challenge and see if you can figure out where in between those two places the problem is coming from, okay? That's one thing to do. The second thing is um, to look at it from the perspective of is it personal? Is this person by the perspective? You also have to ask yourself, is the person being even handed with their, um, their offensive behavior? That's a very important question. If someone treats everyone badly, or from your perspective badly, it may very well be that the individual is either a really bad leader or the individual has decided that the organization at this point requires a certain level. Um, so you've got to put things in context as opposed to just reacting. Because if all you're doing is reacting and not analyzing, you're, you're being unfair to yourself as well as to that individual. All right, the other thing is you have to be clear about whether or not this person is creating a hostile planet. So what do I mean by a hostile climate? A hostile climate is one in which the way you are being treated as an individual or others are being treated as individuals, okay? Or as a class. It can be class. Um, if they're being treated in a way that makes it impossible to do your job, that is a hostile environment, okay? Or a hostile climate. By law, by law. If you work in that organization and you see it, and you are in some kind of managerial position, you are held liable if that goes to court, even if you don't contribute to it. Why? Because you know or should have known. That's the standard. Know or should have known, okay? So you have to pay attention to those things, both in terms of your own treatment and the treatment of others. You don't get to just turn the other way and pay no attention to the treatment of others, because the way the law works now, no or should have known, you're right, you're right in that fire with everybody else, okay? All of interaction in order to move to um, a certain set of goals uh, that, that require um, a, a pretty hard core environment. So you gotta sit down and look at things like what's the strategic plan, what are the goals, what's the mission, what are all of these things, and what is this person doing to contribute to that? Is this unpleasant behavior on the part of the leader actually contributing to moving forward? And there are examples of that kind of thing, you know, where we have situations where leaders ask us to do certain things because there's, and we may say, well, I don't really, I don't really like that, but it does move us forward in a positive way. You know? um, again, in, in uh, you, you know, you've all experienced that as you've gone through school. You, you maybe had a teacher who forced everybody to go through certain exercises and, you, and everybody said, oh, we really hate that teacher. But at the end of the day, um, or maybe even a few years later, you say, boy, I'm sure glad I had that teacher. If I hadn't had that teacher, I never would have learned how to X, you know? And sometimes they're the people who you remember more and you appreciate more as you get older. Because a lot of us, by the way, have a tendency to take things personally when if you really sit back and look at the situation, you're not being treated any differently than anybody else. You just receive things differently. You take them more personally. You are more sensitive in terms of how you react to treatment by someone else. So that's something that you have to think about. Um, the other thing is keep your resume up to date. I'm not kidding about that. I'm very serious about that. Make sure you keep your resume up to date at all times. If you're working for a difficult person, you never know when things are going to fall apart. The person's going to get fired. 
the person's going to fire you. The situation is going to become unbearable. You're going to have more stress than you can handle. And let me say a few words about stress really quickly here. People talk all the time. We overuse the word stress in our society right now. We are so stressed about everything. I had to wait in line for my latte. I am so stressed. You know? I mean, seriously. They, they swiped my credit card at Dunkin' Donuts and it, it wouldn't work and I was just so stressed. I mean, it's, that's not stress. That's luck. Okay? You need to go spend a little time in Europe. You really do. You need to spend a little bit of time where you watch people live their life without getting crazy about stuff. Um, and the question is whether or not things are actionable. Um, and that has to do with the issue of is there, I mean, a subset of hostile climate is sexual harassment. But that's only one piece of it. Hostile environment can be everything from uh, this person always withholds a certain amount of information from us so it's impossible for us to do our job. If there's a pattern of that behavior that sets you up for failure, you and others up for failure, that's a hostile environment. If the person is asking for sexual favors, um, in order for you to, main, to, to, to retain your, your job, that is sexual harassment, okay? Those are the differences. Um, how you deal with those circumstances? Well, several ways. Um, the first thing is, if, if you determine that the individual actually is using this kind of behavior in order to move the whole group forward, one of the things you might want to do is to say, what can I do to improve my performance to help move this forward? What can I do to help turn the tide, in other words, okay? To help create a more positive environment. Um, you should discuss it with the colleagues you trust. Never over email. Never. Why? Because I don't care if you use a Gmail account on your work computer it is work product within the time period that you are in the employment of that organization. They have every right to have access to it. They can own it. They can subpoena it. And they can have it, okay? And it's actionable in terms of firing. So just be aware of that. That's true for texting. It's true for any of that stuff. Don't do anything that you don't, you do it face to face, okay? And you more importantly, try to do things off property. So that you can even say, raise the whole issue hypothetically and say, you know, I've been thinking about the fact that maybe I'm not doing very well at this because Sam, the boss, has consistently told me that. And you don't believe that's the case, but what you're doing is putting it out there as a little bit of test in the water so people can say, well, that happened to me too, really. Interesting. You already know all that. Do you understand my point? But what you're doing is you're engaging your colleagues without doing it in an accusatory fashion about the boss first. So you're testing to see where they fall on this issue. These are trusted colleagues, as opposed to going right out there and saying, so-and-so is a jerk, and, or stronger words, and so on. Okay? No, that's not a smart way to go about it. Because what you don't want to do is create a vigilante mentality in your organization because it's very hard to pull yourself back from being the person who started that whole process. Then you're really in trouble because everybody's going to put you out there and let me tell you something, when you're out on that branch, everybody's very happy to scurry back to the main part of the tree. 